when we reflect on what he has done for us, he has done as well. We are thankful for us. And um, this morning we proclaim that he's the uh, Alpha and Omega. He's our beginning and the end. And he will help us in between until such a time that we can um, join him and be with him in, in glory. And um, as we are reminded always to be thankful in all circumstances. Um, that's one of the things that has really been um, being revealed to me um, during these um, mornings of um, worship and uh, praising God is that sometimes when you hear things or sometimes when you're going through all circumstances, if you just pause and just pause in God and then reflect back, go through all the um, places that he has seen you through or the issues that he has seen you through and all the circumstances that you thought that were, were unbearable and they came to pass. Then we realize that even whatever we are going through at that particular time, it will come to pass. And our responsibility is to just ask God to give us peace and to guide us in those circumstances so that we can go through them without abandoning him or blaming him or thinking that he's not doing his will where we are concerned. So when we reflect on that and think about that, we are in peace and he guides us and shows us the way and we are able to overcome and go through all the any circumstances and all the circumstances that we may need to go through in this life. Because as the Bible says, when we are in this life and these circumstances, we will have tribulations. I think our responsibility and our, um, what we are supposed to go to do is ask God to help us to know how to go through all the, the tribulations guided by him and uh, given peace and strength by him. Uh, and when we think of such a beautiful morning to be awake, yes, we know that he's with us. He's given us strength. He's given us the breath to be alive. And all we can do is praise him. Praise him and be in his presence. Um, now we will... Um, Pray for the uh, Alice as she comes in, Sister Alice, as she comes in to give us the word for today. Let us pray. God, again, we come before you this morning. And now we want to ask you to open our hearts so that we may hear your word and get it according to what we need in our lives. Guide Alice as she gives us his, the word that you have given her. May it enrich us, may it guide us, and may it help us in whatever we do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Alice. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Zipporah. Um, yes. Um, uh, yep. The word that the Lord has put in my heart for a couple of, um, I say for quite some time, is to share about this regarding um, warfare strategy um, through worship. And just as Sister Zipporah say, you know, he say, um, God, we have lots of struggles and tribulations um, every day. We have to ask God how to help us face, you know, these uh, tribulations, our daily struggles. And I mean, our daily struggles are not meant to, um, how to say, are not meant to paralyzes but it is um you know it, it is also um 
it's like a two-edged sword. It's also to for us, you know, to grow in strength and resilience. You know, God has given us strength to face this. And, you know, um, the breath, we wake up each morning that we are alive, that we have good health. That is one of the blessings that, that God has given us. And um, we usually... You know, when we talk about uh, praise and worship, we always think, oh, at the start of the event, at the start of the uh, Sunday service, we always sing, you know, at the start of a prayer meeting, a conference, we always sing to the Lord. It becomes sometimes like, like one of the itinerary in any church event. You start off with the worship and then you pray and then the, the speaker come forward and share. Um, but, you know, how many of us really, you know, sit, pause a bit and think, you know, what, what really is the, the praise and worship uh, what, what do we use it for? I mean, of course, we use it to 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 you know to to sing our adoration um, to God, and um, you know to that's how we express our love to Him and and our gratitude. Yes, that's one of the way, but it's also a very uh, strong weapon against uh, spiritual warfare. When we talk about spiritual warfare, it's about um, you know us fighting against um, the works of the enemy, Satan, who tries to distract us, you know, from our from God's calling in each of our life. Um, in um, the scripture in Bible, um, it says in John ten ten, you know, the thief's purpose is to steal, to kill, and destroy. And my purpose, and Jesus said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And some uh, version they say a, a an abundant life. Um, so we know the Bible says the thief is there to steal, to kill and destroy. There is no uh, mercy. Um, he's there all out to kill us, you know, to, to destroy us from fulfilling um, God's given uh, destiny in our life. So that, we have to remember, that is the goal of the enemy. He's not, he's a thief. He comes from the back silently, you know, and he comes face forward with, the, you know, he can attack, ambush you um, without you, um, you know, without you expecting it. And so when we uh, struggle, when we focus on pursuing Christ, when we focus on, you know, obeying God, the enemy will do all his best, whatever ways to, to distract us so that we are, we, and throw us off the course so we take the wrong path sometimes. Um, so we know that, you know, we have three main men, enemies when it comes to warfare. We have three main enemies. The most, um, to me, the, the ones that we struggle daily is the our first enemy is the flesh, ourself, our sinful nature. We struggle with that every day. We eat decisions, small or big decisions in our life. We struggle with that. And number two is um, the worldview, the cultures around us um, that oppose to what um, the Lord, um, the, what, what the Bible says. You know, that the world culture and the culture, the godly culture and what we see in the Bible are oppos opposing one another. You either choose to follow the world or you choose to follow God. Um, there is a decision to be made there and that is one of our enemy. Which which one do we make? Do we please men or do we please God? When we please God at times, everyone is against us. And then the third one, um, the first flesh in the world, you see it, you know, you, you, you're you aware of it because it, it can be something physical, it can be something that affects you. Um, uh, it's a, something tangible or visible. But the third one, the last one, the main enemy is the devil and the, his uh, team of demons. And these are something spiritual you cannot see with your eyes. And sometimes, you know, um, we ignore it. You know, in Western culture, we ignore this, um, you know, the talks about, you know, spiritual, you know, that, that there is a, a, a spiritual enemy um, in, within, uh, within us, coexisting within us, uh, among us here in our community. So when we um, see believers engage, when in my younger days as a, as a Christian, when I see believers engage in, in, in spiritual warfare, it's... Um, I see like, you know, great power. They, they, they pray very loudly, you know, they bind the spirits and then they rebuke and they, and they uh, you know, this, this is, um, they tear down strongholds and they quote scriptures. And when I was younger, I'm like, oh God, how can I do that? I, I don't know what to say. I don't know, um, you know, I don't have the confidence. I, I don't know what to, you know, what are the, what, what, how should I pray? Um, I'm not eloquent. I can't speak as well as these people who pray, you know, and, you know, I also don't really know how to quote Bible not I know those Bibles uh, the scripture verses how do I get it I mean these people just speak it they don't need to open the Bible they just quote it off their head I'm like I'm not like that so what do I do you know what how do I I don't know what to do where to start and so so I mean there are many 
Um, I'm not saying those are, are wrong, but there are many uh, strategies when it comes to um, spiritual warfare. Um, those, you know, praying aloud, quoting a scripture is one of it, but the other one that, you know, that we um, not, well, there are few people, uh, there are um, people who are starting to be aware of it, is that, that warfare um, through worship. Um, I want to, um, you know, so when we, in, in our daily life, like for some of us, when we go through our, when we want to apply for a new job and we got the uh, email to say, okay, come in for job interview. So we are all, we prepared, you know, we have a good rest before that. Uh, we also look up a couple of days before that, we are look up, you know, what is this, we, this company, what do they do, the organization structure, you know, what is the, the culture of this company, we ask around. Um, and also, you know, we, we, um, we mentally prepare. What are some questions that they could, the interviewer could possibly could possibly ask me? And then I prepare all oh, these are the questions. I prepare the answers for it. And then I even choose, you know, what to wear the day before the interview. So these are some things that we um, we prepare before we go for a job interview. So what more when we go for a spiritual um, warfare? When we are faced on with it, don't you think that we need to be even more? well prepared for the battle so you know what what do we do when we are battling over our own personal destiny and or our children's destiny with the enemy um, don't you think you know we have to uh, be well equipped and the bible talks about you know also the the armor of god yes that is one of the the, the we need to put on the armor of god but i also want to share with you um the a few character in the bible um that will um reveal to us how um, they use uh, worship, you know, and, and how they seek the Lord in, in, um, in overcoming um, the enemies. So the first um, character is um, uh, King Jehoshaphat in, in 2 Chronicles verse 20. So in 2 Chronicles verse 20, I won't read the entire um, chapter because it's quite long. Um, so if you look at uh, 2 Chronicles um, chapter 20, it starts off saying that, you know, um, the messenger came to reveal to King Jehoshaphat that the Moabites, Ammonites, and the third one is the Meonites uh, have came to wage war against them. They are on the way. And that, that made um, King Jehoshaphat feel terrified. Um, because it's not that they news that they are coming, but they are already on the way uh, to attack him. So he was very terrified and he ordered everyone um, in Judah. Um, the, king Jehoshaphat well, at the time was the ruler, uh, was the king in Judah. And so he ordered everyone to begin fasting. And I like the prayer um, that he prayed um, uh, for uh, in Second Chronicles uh, chapter 20, verse 6 to 12. I'll read the, um, the, his prayer. And it says, um, uh, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all kingdoms of nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow us, you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turn away. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast enemy that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So if you see um, this prayer, um, Jehoshaphat is telling God that, you know, he's, He's exalting him, you know, uh, power and might are in your hand. You know, you rule over all the kingdoms and, you know, no one can, you know, withstand you, you know, and he reminded God, you know, he, as he, re, he recalled, you know, what God has done for his ancestors and, you know, how they have brought him, you know, his, his covenant with the people of Israel and that, you know, if they have anything 
uh, any big thing that come, you know, whether it's plague or judgment or famine, they know that, you know, they can come back to the temple um, that bears the name of God and you cry out to him and he will answer. And he says that, you know, um, these people are coming, you know, these people are coming to attack us. We have spared them previously, but now they are coming to take away what you have given to us. You know, God, Will you help us? God, we have no power. We don't know what to do. You know, please show us and, you know, our eyes are on you. So they are waiting with expectant on what God will show them, how, what God will reveal to them. And, you know, um, in, later on in the verse 13, it's not just the men um, who come and gather in the main, in, in, together, you know, and, and pray. But we can see um, in, in, the, in the scripture, it says the men, the women, the children and little ones. That means all, every generation came before the Lord, stood before the Lord and, you know, to ask God for help. Um, it's, it, they say children and little ones. That means they will be youth and the younger ones. It's not just, you know, a man coming and, and seeking the Lord and the women and the children are at home waiting. But everyone come together, the unity, the body of Christ that comes together, you know, to, to seek the Lord, to, to call upon him for help. And then the Lord responded, you know, and says the battle belongs to him. And God gave them instruction so of the strategy. So when they seek the Lord, the Lord revealed to them. So this is what God tells them in, in verse 16, that you need to march out, um, you know, against your enemy. You take position, take position, which means that stand still. You have to watch. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. You know, go out against them for I am with you. That was God's instruction um, well, regards to the strategy. And the people, when they heard that, they responded. The king, in verse 18, the king would bow down with the face. He bowed low with the face down. On the, to the ground um, for a king to do this it is a sign of humility because you know the king they are a person of authority and for them for a king to bow low before God it is a sign of humility and therefore his people will also uh, whatever the leader does the people will follow and so all the people of Judah and Israel those who came and prayed they followed the king and bowed low um, you know with face to the ground and the Levites stood to praise God with a loud shout. So this is a this is a worship, you know, when you shout to the Lord. And so they went back and the next morning they um King Jehoshaphat tells the people, you know, um to believe in God. So that is a strategy. Believe in the God and you know be um just believe that they will be uh victorious. They will win the war. So the king, um, King Jehoshaphat, appointed men to sing to the Lord and position them ahead of the army. So he Usually the army is there to, to, to move forward in the battle, but he puts the worship team ahead of the army. So the people sang, the Lord ambushes against the people, the, the three teams from Mount Seir, Moab, and Ammon. So the men from Ammon and Moab destroyed men, they gathered, they, they gathered the gang up together and they destroyed the men and killed the men from Mount Seir. And then they turned towards each other, the Ammonites and the Moabites. They turned to each other and they destroyed themselves. They killed each other. So um, God has set the army of Judah at the, uh, to arrive at the lookout point. So all they look for the eyes, they can tell that. You know, all when they look out, all they see is dead bodies on the ground as far as the eyes could see. And none of the enemy had escaped according to verse 24. So then King Jehoshaphat and his army went out to gather the plunder and he said there's so many so many treasures for them to gather that it took them three days. And then they marched back to J Jerusalem with music of harps, lyres and trumpets and towards the temple of God. So they start with the prayer at the temple of God and when they come back from the battle, they again go to the temple of God. So you can see, so these the people, the army, did not fight. They did was the, you know, the, the appointed men to sing and position them ahead of the army and they just need to stand in the position. That was what called call them to do. Sing, stand in the position and then they said when the enemy has um, killed each other, they are there to um, take their, their whatever belongings that they have. Another um, example, another character in the Bible is Gideon. Uh, Gideon from Judges um, chapter 7. Also, again, God, um, Gideon had a very large group of enemy, uh, of a large group of army, and God said that, um, you know, you have too many warriors. You know, if I let you all fight the Midianites, 
because you have so many warriors, you just say, you know, um, you know, we, we win. Uh, you boast to yourself that we win because um, of our own strength. So God instructed uh, Gideon to reduce his army population. And he started off with 32,000. So he daily announced those who are who are you know who are afraid you can leave, um those who are timid go ahead and you know just leave. So twenty two thousand left, and he left back with ten thousand people to fight the war. The Lord God, and then the Lord further reduced his army to three hundred people, and then um so that is the from thirty two thousand to three hundred people to go into war, and then. Uh, and as he goes down, Gideon overheard a man telling uh, his friend about a dream. And then, um, you know, in, in response to it, um, wait, let me see. in response to that dream, um, uh, yeah, so in, in response to, to, to listening to the dream, heard the dream and its interpretation, um, Gideon bowed in worship before the Lord. His reverence to the God, to the God and, you know, his, his um, um, you know, humility, again, reverence as a leader. Gideon is a, a, a leader, a general. Uh, we can see a general who leads the army into war. He even declared that God has given him, given them victory over the Midianites. The, the war hasn't, hasn't, you know, he hasn't gone to the battle, but yet he knew, he declared that the victory is, is, is won. Uh, the victory has been given to him. And he gave um, each person, uh, each each. Uh, and a, a ram's horn and a jar, a clay jar with torch uh, to each man with the army, in the army. So Gideon told them, you know, um, keep your eyes on me. When I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I do. You know, as soon as I and those with me blow the ram's horn, uh, blow your horns too, all around the entire camp and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. So that's, that was the strategy that was given to him, you know. And so each man took position. So they had come into three groups. And then, you know, they, they later, they blew the horn and broke the jar with one horn, with a horn, with a ram's horn on one hand and a torch on the other hand. Then they shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. So they watched the Midianites panic. You know, confusion arise in the camp, uh, uh, in camp's um, territory. And um yeah, so they they um so they caused the warriors in the camp to fight against one another with their sword. And those um that were not killed, um, you know, they ran away, but Gideon sent warriors to you know to cut them off to kill the remaining ones. So you can see that um God, you know, asked um God has done the, the battle. The victory is belongs to the, the to, to to the Israelites. Um God has um instructed them and you see they need to just the shout um, with the ram's horn the ram's horn is likely the shofar um, it's also used for worship and also for warfare and we also hear in 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 um in uh, first samuel chapter 16 verse 23 um there is a verse that says um when um the spirit of verse 16 First Samuel chapter 16, verse 23, it says, Whenever the Spirit from God um, came on whenever the Spirit from God came on Saul, David would take up his lyre and play. Then the relief would come to Saul. He would feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. So we know even music, um, worship uh, brings deliverance from evil spirit. So worship is a weapon. It helps us to remind us of who God is. Just now, even as um, you know, Chris, Sister Christine was uh, leading worship, I was just copying down a few of the, the, the words that she says. Blessing and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving and honor, power and might belongs to our God forever and ever. Amen. So it reminds us of you know, who God is. We focus on his character. We exalt his name, um, the name of Jesus. We, um, you know, we, we, it helps us to um, focus and remember that Jesus is the King of Kings and we proclaim his victory over above all else, every battle, above every battle. You know, worship, worship shifts our focus uh, from our personal struggles and circumstances to God, you know, who is seated on the throne. 
So when we worship him, we don't just think of, you know, oh, you know, we have these bills to pay. We have um, our children are not, you know, I have strayed away from the Lord. Our children are disobedient. They are, they are not doing well. They are always against me. And, you know, we shift all that. Not, it, it's not going away, but we don't want to focus on it. We want to focus on God and let God handle the rest of, you know, give us the insight on how to manage our personal struggles, how to overcome it. So when worship, you know, we declare light over darkness. We declare life over death, love over fear. When God's people worship, darkness trembles and the enemies is scattered. So we at once in the front line of battle, shouting his praise and we show up you know, to an already won battle. The Lord has won and Jesus has won it all on the cross. You know, it's, it's us, you know, believing in it. So like Jehoshaphat and Gideon, our God, you know, like, you know, God does all the fighting for them. You know, he gives us a strategy how to position ourselves so that we can fight for, so that, you know, he can fight for us. Uh, we don't know how to pray or what to pray. So we worship the Lord. Um, so, you know, sometimes um, we just don't know how to start to pray and worshiping the Lord. Even the, just a one line as you worship, just repeating, you are speaking to the inner spirit, the spirit in, in you, the spirit man in you, and, you know, focusing on the Lord. So, you know, um, we each have our own battles to face um, individually. Sometimes we face it as a family. Sometimes we face it as a church, you know. But what is, what, how are we, how are we facing these battles? What is um, the strategy of God, you know, that he's calling you to execute? Um, we are constantly in the, in, you know, a battle between the flesh and the spirit, you know. Um, so how do we respond? Do we, you know, respond on our own? just with our own strength or are we including God, um, you know, in, in facing our daily struggles? You know, God, um, help us, you know, we want to ask God to help us to be like um, Gideon, to be like King Jehoshaphat, you know, to seek him whenever we are faced with the tribulation, um, you know, to seek him first and let him give us um, the battle strategy because he knows it all. He knows our future. So who is, you know, who how why do we rely on our own strength why do we you know just um when we can't, we don't know know what's going to happen the next day so we need to rely on god um and even you know in, in the book of psalm we can see that um david continuously sing um, worship sing praises to the lord even at the opening you know like like um i think in psalm 22 uh psalm with Psalm 22 verse 3 that um, the Lord is enthroned in the praises of Israel and even at the start when um, of the worship you know we hear he says oh come let us sing Psalm 95 verse 1 to 3 oh come let us sing to the Lord let us make joyful noise to the rock of our salvation let us come into his presence with thanksgiving let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise it is in, in the Bible that, you know, um, we come to the Lord with song of praises, you know, as it's a way for us to battle, um, to, to face spiritual warfare. So um, it's this, um, you know, we, we may not necessarily need to use this every time, but always seek the Lord. What is the strategy for every warfare that we are facing? Um, so um, that's all uh, for me um, today. And I'll just close in. I'll, I'll just end with a, with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that God, you open our eyes to see these two characters in the Bible, Gideon and King Jehoshaphat, how they come um, before you in humility and in reverence um, and that they seek you for the tribulations, for the struggles they face within their community. You have opened up their eyes to see how to uh, fight the war. And Lord, in each of these, Lord, and you, they are their position is just to obey you, to take their stand, to face the enemy. But they do not need to do um, the physical hard work to go into the, you know, to 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 um, battle. You did all it. You have slain the enemies before them, and like King Jehoshaphat, he would reap the harvest uh, from the enemy. And first for Gideon, he is just to finish off what who, the uh, some of the enemies that ran away, Lord. You have um, done it for them. 
um, and that Lord for us in our personal struggle as we have come we have at many times we try to do it our own way not your way but our own way forgive us Lord we want to come before you and ask you Lord you are the you know it all you hold our future in the palm of your hands you are um um, you, you, you are a promise keeper and Lord you are our creator let us come before you to seek your face to know um, the strategy that we ought to take in order to face every different struggle at our workplace within our family within our personal health even our health oh Lord open up our eyes and help us to have a heart of humility to accept what you are going to show and reveal to us and help us to obey let us let go of all our own personal agenda, all our pride, and let go and uh, seek you and turn our face, um, you know, to, towards you, so that we will and our ears be attend to tune to your, um, to you, and so that we um, we hear you speak and we obey. Give us a heart, a, a soft heart to obey what you have called us to do, and Lord help us, Lord, to um, believe that the, that you have won it all. The birth, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, his crucifixion, his crucifixion, and his resurrection has, um, you know, won all battles, and now we are to trust in you. Help us to have, um, the heart to believe in it, and proclaim victory over all our uh, struggles. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 As his diaries. Oh, that's a um reminder just at the right time because sometimes we forget the weapons that God has given us to help us to fight these um, battles that we come across because I think one of our greatest um, um, battle is when we hear something or we have a problem and then we lack the peace but as Alice has said, if we worship God, um, we just calm down, you know, we calm down and then we are able to listen to the word that the God will have for us on how to overcome and how to go through that situation that we are going through. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Alice, for that. And, you know, all the examples that he has given us and it's not only um sometimes we listen but i think the power is in poison um talking out the words of worship to god yes we can listen to the music but we need to um voice it to sing it out and sometimes i don't think it matters whether the um, it's liming or whether it is the right pitch. I think the most important thing is just for us to voice it and God will receive our worship and give us the peace and the victory that we need. Thank you very much for that, Alice, for that word. Um, this morning, I think I also want to ask all the people that are on our forum to remember one of, one of our sisters who has lost a loved one. Um, we ask you to pray for her that she may have peace in these um, difficult um, circumstances. Yeah, so if you can just pray for her during this difficult time that um, God may give them the peace and strength that they need. Um, I'm not sure whether there's anything else uh, for the next week or any announcements. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, so um, tomorrow um, there's the meeting 12 to 3 at the Ferrari 60 Goodwood Road Church. Um, so um, it's still on. And next week we will be doing um, testimony. Uh, we won't be doing the sharing of the word. Uh, it's dedicated to just... Um, sharing of testimony so for those who uh, would like for god to have influence have have grown you uh, during the season where they are at this prayer altar and you would like to give um you know the um, thanks to the lord um let me know if that you want to share um the testimony on how god has blessed you how he had ministered to you through this um prayer altar platform 
So yeah, I think that's all for me. Thank you. Okay. And so um yes yeah, so um to conclude we all thank God for what He has been to us um today now as we have worshipped Him and always and I think we have to thank God in a special way for Jenny Masses for Pastor Julia. I understand she's back, uh, um, recovering from jet lag. <laughs> we thank God that um, God has seen her through the whole journey and has brought her back safely. And we are trusting that um, uh, soon she'll be able to um, um, talk to us and let us know how it all went. And so... Yeah. She, she's mm. back. She's back. She's at work. Um, so she'll be uh, sharing on Monday. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. So we thank God uh, for that and for everybody else, because I know and believe that God has seen them through and has been with them and has given them peace and have given them many things. And so um, let us um, say, um, Thank you, God, and um, say grace as we conclude. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. All of you have a blessed day and uh, continue worshiping God using that um, worship welfare. Amen. Amen.